This is Tall Tale TV, your podcast for sci-fi and fantasy short stories. Sploosh, written by Andrew L. Hodges, performed by Chris Heron. Look, officer, I'll explain it again, okay? But we're running out of time. It all started a couple of hours ago. I guess around three? Me and my little brother were going full Cain and Abel at each other. Pucks was trying to start something, like always, and just begging to get his hide tanned. He's short, even for a little snot, but he always walks around like a gunslinger with two pistols in his belt. I've wailed on him enough to teach him to stay out of my way, and if you knew him... Oh, my brother Phil? We always call him Pucks. Like Pucks a Tunny Phil. Because he likes to act like Mr. Tough Guy, but everyone knows he's scared of his own shadow. I've whipped him at every fight we've ever had. But he's the kind of kid that just doesn't learn. I reckon he's got a vendetta against me, on account of me being older. Anyway... I was just trying to watch TV and mind my own business. Pucks had been a pain in the neck all day today, and he was trying to get at me. I finally just had no choice but to let him have it. Everybody's got a breaking point, and once you're past it, you just go for it full throttle. Pucks always knew how to push my buttons, and I guess today was just the wrong day for him to make up a pest of himself. We got so rough with each other... We ended up tearing the living room all to heck, and Mom finally just blew her top. Ever since Dad walked out, she's been really tense, so I guess we should have known better. Me, personally, I wouldn't shed a tear for my old man, but I've seen Mom boo-hooing to beat the band the last couple of days. I felt bad for her, but stupid Pucks was the one who pushed things. I caught hell, too guilt by association, but what are you going to do? She flapped her gums for a good eternity about how we were causing too much ruckus. Her words, not mine. After twisting our ears off, she kicked our butts out of the house and said we were on our own until dinner time. She even locked the door behind us so we couldn't sneak back in. So, outside, things kind of cooled off between us. At first, we just fooled around in the front yard and tried to find something to do. We had an hour to kill, but nobody else to kill it with. Pucks got it into his head that he wanted to play Sploosh, and I was all, Oh, it's this game Pucks made up. I mean, made up, right? See, all it is, you kind of race down the street and jump into every puddle you pass. And every time you jump into a puddle... You gotta make the biggest splash you can, and whoever splooshes the most wins. Simple, right? It's a dumb kid's game, but Pucks thought he was Mr. Cool for inventing it. Pucks was always making up stories and get-rich-quick schemes and trying to get whoever would listen to go along with it. He was always roping me into helping him run lemonade stands, amateur comic book printing companies, homemade rags, every stupid thing he could think of. I was wise to him, though. So, anyway, we had that big storm yesterday, and all the potholes on our street were filled up with water to make a bunch of huge puddles. And Pucks is all like, We gotta play! We gotta play! And I'm like, No! Let's ride our bikes or something! But Pucks, he just keeps going on and on... So I get this idea, and I'm like, fine, whoever loses buys the winner in ice cream at the McDonald's up the road. The one on Yorktown, right? Anyway, I figured Pucks would back out. He's seven, and I'm twelve. I can outrun him without even thinking about it. Easy win, but stupid Pucks goes along with it. I, I mean, that's freaking Pucks for you, right? He was half my size and always tries to call rank on me. The kid was suicidal, man. We start running down the road like a pair of dum-dums, and we're both jumping in every puddle we get to, making the nastiest splashes we can. I'm winning. No contest. Our street's a real mess, man, 
and there are potholes like every two feet. And I mean, out of all the puddle potholes, I'm splooshing about every single one. Little Pucks, he can't even keep up with me on the running part, much less the splooshing part, and he's falling way behind. I'm so far out ahead, it's not even funny, and I'm jumping from pothole to pothole, just splooshing left and right. I was kind of having fun, I won't lie, but stupid Pucks didn't look too happy. He was ticked. But whose fault was that? As usual... He kicked the bull and then wants to complain about the horns. So we get to the dead end of the road. There's this kind of roundabout, and in the middle is this great big, what do you call it, indentation? It's been there forever, and the folks on the block are always petitioning town council to get it filled in. They have big meetings about it every year, but nothing ever happens. The bigwigs up at the council don't give a rat's rear about the folks on our block, and they just let it keep getting deeper every year. By now, I reckon it's maybe half a foot deep, and, I don't know, I'd say maybe six feet around. A monster of a pothole, right? All the kids on our street call that bad boy the pit, and we jump our bikes and boards over it Evil Knievel style, Anyway, it was full of water and looked like the world's biggest puddle. The thing was practically a pond, you know. And I figured one last big sploosh in that thing was a good way to round my victory. The crescendo, right? I was still mad at Pucks for getting me kicked out of the house. And I wanted to whip him good and proper at his own stupid game. To rub his nose in it, you know. So... I'm going as fast as I can, heading right for it, and planning on splooshing the biggest sploosh ever. And man, Pucks just cuts right in front of me. The kid outran me for the first time in... ever. I mean, dude, he's never beat me at anything. Not even close. But that one day, he put on a burst of speed like a jet engine and just... whoosh just cut me right off. I was kind of proud of him for a little bit. Like, he finally came through for once, you know? So, the next thing I know, Pucks cannonballs into the pothole. I mean, he actually did a cannonball. He always was a show-off. Anyway, this big tidal wave comes up, like a tsunami, and splatters all over me. Dude, I was ready to throw down then and there. We were both soaked, and I knew that Mom was going to have a coronary when we got back inside. Old Pucks had been asking for a good kick in the poop pucker all day, and I figured it was time for me to oblige. I walked towards the pothole and was planning on taking his hide when I noticed something kind of odd. Little Pucks is up to his shoulders in water, but the pothole is only a foot deep at best. I mean, it couldn't have been deeper than that. It was just a pothole. Heck, I'd been playing army men with my pal Chris from up the street ten feet from that thing the other day, and it looked like maybe six inches at the deepest. But Pucks is splashing around, making like he's drowning, and I just told him to quit fooling around. I figured it had to be a gag, right? Oldest trick in the book. I go over, give him a hand, and he pulls me in with him. The only thing that got to me was that Pucks was suddenly one heck of an actor because he kept going under. I didn't even think it was deep enough to do that much. But he would just go down for a couple of seconds and then pop back up. He sure as heck looked scared, and he was yelling loud enough to split your eardrums. The kid screamed bloody murder, and I thought he'd get the neighbors involved if he kept it up. So, I figured I'd just risk getting punked if only it would shut him up. Well, that's when I saw what I thought was a snake moving around in the water. It was this 
long, smooth thing writhing just beside Pucks, kind of wrapping around him. Then it started coming out of the water, and it was a bug, okay? Like, I don't know, a giant centipede or something. You can laugh if you want, but that's what it was. It was all long and green and dripping slimy stuff as it came out of the water. It had these huge pinchers on its head and these smooth black eyes big as your fist. I only saw maybe the top half of its body, but it had to be huge. Even the head had to be two times bigger than mine. And it had these big old legs on it that were at least three feet long apiece. The thing was a monster, and I still got no idea how it could even fit down in the pit like that. But hey, how that bad boy was hiding in the puddle is the least of what freaked me out about it. I thought of yelling. I know that's what I should do, but I, I froze up, man. Everything happened so fast, I didn't have time to react. It had these mandibles, big as hedge clippers, and they clamped around Puck's throat faster than you could blink. He didn't even have time to scream before that thing cut off his windpipe. Its legs had rows of hooks all along the bottom, and it started latching onto his shirt and breeches. Then this coiled tail, it must have been about ten feet long, came out of the water and started wrapping around Pucks like a python. That bad boy was thick as a tree limb and covered with these huge black plates like giant scales. It wrapped around him three or four times, quick as you could blink, and started to tighten until Pucks' face turned blue. I could feel my heart about to climb out of my mouth, but I just couldn't scream. Next thing I knew, Pucks got... Well, he got dragged under. He was there, and then he was... gone. I just stood there. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Look, officer, you gotta help me. He's still down there. He's just gotta be. In his own words, Andrew L. Hodges is just some biology nerd who likes to write science fiction and horror. Hey guys, I hope you like this story. I've only had a couple of stories that give me this similar feel on this channel. It's, I get this kind of impression of like the 1950s atomic family where, you know, the dad comes home with the car and uh, the kids are out playing in the front yard on their bikes, you know. I don't know why I get that feeling, but it just strikes me that way. And I've had, I think maybe two other stories the entire time this channel's been around that give me that kind of feel. And I always like it. I'm not sure why. I think maybe it's kind of a uh, Twilight Zone kind of thing going on. I don't know, but I get a real big kick out of it. I hope you guys did too. If you did like the story, be sure to leave a thumbs up or a comment if you're on Facebook or YouTube. Or if you're listening to the podcast, you can always go to Apple Podcasts to leave a review. And of course, be sure to subscribe. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV. Tall Tale TV